Taranaki took a one-point lead into the break after Jaden Hayward scored the only try of the half. All Black Scott Waldrum's return from injury was marred by a binning for a high tackle and Northland were quick to capitalise on the extra man. Beautiful ball, Lockie Munro in some space. Carpenter with a show and guard to try. Northland held out the Naki as the clock ticked down, the Tanifa winning 29-16. Wellington made a nervous start and it almost cost him dearly from the kickoff. And uh, that could have been a disaster. But Daniel Kirkpatrick settled things down with an early penalty. Hawks Bay weren't showing any mercy to their visitors and kept the dangerous Wellington backline in check with some strong defence. The Bay levelled things up with a penalty of their own, but they gave the Wellington backs one chance too many. Here's the opening try, and it's going to be scored by Jose Gear. But Gear spoiled his good work by conceding a penalty soon after and getting sent to the bin. Hawks Bay making use of the extra man to score a converted try just before half time and lead 13 10 at the break. And in Hamilton, Waikato showed plenty of urgency in the early exchanges, but it wasn't until the 25th minute that their efforts turned into points. And now they're going to be a big chance on the left hand side. Manawatu found an almost immediate reply, slicing through the Waikato midfield. He's got a player coming on the inside, they won't get him. The rocket ball is under the post. Waikato then mounted a series of sustained attacks, twice denied tries. But Sione Loaki made no mistake when he had a chance close to the line. The Mulu scored their third try soon after half time to boost their lead to 25 10. Turbo star Aaron Cruden went in under the posts to give his side a glimmer of hope, but Sassini Anisi quickly killed off any chance of a comeback. Sassini Anisi with a beautiful left foot step goes around Kurt Baker, you can't coach class. Manawatu scored a late consolation try, but it wasn't enough to bag them a bonus point, losing 30 to 22. Ross McNaughton, 3 News. There was nothing neighbourly in the early exchanges as the southern men sorted each other out, but point scoring was at a premium. Junior World Cup winner Robbie Robinson's third penalty, giving Southland a 9-6 lead on the stroke of half-time. The Stags continued their momentum in the second spell, Robinson's sleight of hand setting up the first try. McIntosh, Robinson looking for a gap, he gets it away, it's a try! Kendrick in the centre... Terrific start for Southland. There was nothing pretty about the Stags' second, but it was effective, stretching the lead to 23-12. There's a chance, it's a try, is it? Yes, it is. Former warrior Ryan Shortland put Otago back in the match. There's a chance for Shortland. Shortland's in. But Southland held on 26-19 to remain unbeaten so far. In the night's other match, Taswin looked headed for defeat as they trailed North Harbour 15-6, but the Marcos bit back. He finds Balanese, Melnick for the corner, first try of the match. And in the 74th minute, they put their northern opponents away. Again the drive, they're over the line, try given. Harbour couldn't bridge the gap, Tasman earning their first win of the competition, 19-15. Tony Cyprian, 3 News. After swapping early penalties, the Bay had the opening try, winger Jason Horner going over in the corner. Mike Delaney's five penalties extended the lead to 22-9 before the steamers cut loose in the final ten minutes. Pariyanga and a player coming on his left in the form of Horner down the left side. The second try is a very, very good one. Some decoys, Nigel Hunt with a show and go. And just short slams the ball down. And the try is awarded. The three tries to none win, pushing the Bay to the top of the table after two completed rounds. And Dan Carter's given the All Black selectors plenty to think about with his latest performance. The star first five scored all of Canter Canterbury's points as the Red and Blacks beat Auckland 22-16. A second straight loss, leaving Auckland last on the points table. Ross McNaughton reports. Another step on the comeback trail for Dan Carter and the Auckland team had a greeting party ready. But Carter was soon back on his feet to slot a penalty and the first five's accurate boot had Canterbury playing their rugby in the right half of the field. And, well, it's a good kick. Auckland and Canterbury have a rich shared history, but this wasn't one of the classics. Carter kicking Canterbury to a 9-0 lead at the break. And only some desperate defence kept the Red and Blacks out after the interval. 
some Auckland in discipline saw Canterbury extend their lead. Down 12-0, Auckland put together their most dominant period of the match, winning three quick penalties. And with Adam Whitelock in the bin, fullback Paul Williams made the most of the extra space. Flakes the pass, well, Williams scores! But Auckland's lead didn't last, as that man Carter was to the fore again. Bateman gets the ball to Carter. Carter scores on nicely done, Canterbury. Not everyone appreciated Carter's talents, though, but that only gave him the chance for a fifth penalty. Canterbury winning 22-16, and while Carter's not in the squad for next week's all-black training camp in Auckland, his performance showed a return to the black jersey can't be too far away. Ross McNaughton, 3 News.